it's it's time to move forward and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And maybe for me, it was like not having what I'm used to, mm -hmm. but embracing it. Yeah, embracing it. Because right now, as we today, I'm a better version of myself now than I was yesterday, and I expect to be a better version tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Ecker, United States Marine entrepreneur and instructor of the project. Welcome to the MDK Project Show. This is a show for men in search of meaningful transformations in their family, fitness, finances, and faith. And this occurs through hardship and sacrifice so that they can become even better husbands, fathers, leaders, entrepreneurs, and men. Today, I have a special guest, a graduate of class 007 of the project, Mark Perez, thanks for joining us. Of course. Welcome to the show. Wouldn't miss it for anything. Can you just give a quick quick breakdown, introduce yourself, where you're from, what do you do? My name is Mark Perez. I'm a real estate broker. I've been a real estate broker for 20 years. I got a real estate team, SoCal Properties, uh, from Long Beach, California. Awesome, awesome, good stuff. So you just graduated class 007. How long ago has that been now since you graduated? Geez, that's been, uh, that was in February. We're already in June, so we're looking, we got a few months, a few, definitely a few months, yeah. So let me ask you, you're, you're a, an interesting situation for the project because I'll get men, a lot of times they're very successful men, like you, you've been successful in business, successful in life. Why would someone that, that's had some, you know, a good amount of success, you've made millions of dollars in real estate, feel like the need to do something like the project. What was the, the reason for you even joining? Because I'll get guys on the phone, they'll kind of be the know-it-all type and have that ego and think, oh no, I don't need this, I'm already making tons of money, and my, I'm just, my life is just great. What was it that you felt you needed something more than, than what you already were achieving? Well, you know, it all started when COVID hit, that was in March 15th or something, I saw a, a podcast with Ray Cash Care, and um, Ray Cashcare, you ever heard of him? No. Yeah, Ray, you don't yeah, mention that, that name on oh, here. Okay, I take it back. I just saw some guy. I saw his podcast, and I was like, you know what? I need that guy. I need that guy because I got to be a better version of myself during this COVID when everyone's panicking. That's what I did. Then it led to the project, and here I am now sitting with you, enjoying this conversation. That's awesome. That's awesome. So. What, what specifically were some of the maybe struggles or areas you felt like you could grow in or that you hit a ceiling in, you, you could have done more in? Uh, basically, I would say my personal life. My personal life. I judge myself as just being a father and pretty much fuck everything else in my personal life. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was. And that, that kind of persona infiltrated itself in business. You have to have both. You can't have one without the other. And that was me for my life. I, I think I lacked proper leadership. I, I wasn't a great friend. I wasn't, I, I wasn't any of it. I needed to man up. And also, uh, you know, touching on this and going through uh, reading Bedros' books also helped out. And that motivated me. And honestly, I learned so much going through the project. That's beautiful. Awesome. awesome, good stuff. So, so people from the outside might have been looking at you before the project and be like, Oh, this dude has his shit together, right? He, he, he's he's on top of the world. He has no need for this, right? But there were different things going on inside your own head, right? That's pretty much what you're saying. Yeah, it, basically a facade, a facade. This guy has his shit together. Couldn't be closest to the truth. And I think what you said is what, what I want to touch on that is you, you said you, as a father, you were just focused. It was all on that and basically fuck everything else. That's all that mattered. And it's it's funny. I've gone through the same thing myself. You know, when I grew up, I learned nothing from my father. I had zero relationship with my father. So that made me tell myself, right, I'm going to be the one to break the cycle. And I'm going to go all in and be the awesome fucking super dad I can. And I spend more time with my kids than anyone I know. And one time, my, my wife even had to put me in check one time. She said, listen, I know you want to be such a great dad, but don't forget about the rest of us over here. Because I put so much energy and focus. Like, all right, I'm going to go obsessed with being this super dad, especially, you know, to my son to be that father figure that I ever had that, all right, wait a minute, you're starting to slip up. So sometimes you gotta get put in check, right? And that's kind of what you needed the project to do is like open your eyes to the rest of the world that it expanded beyond your son. That doesn't mean take away from what you're doing with your son. It means now give some of that same energy and focus to other areas. Absolutely, I was like a racehorse with blinders on just straight ahead and that was it. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, I'm not that way now. I'm definitely not that way. So you, so you made the decision to, what were some of the hesitations you had first before you even actually pulled the trigger and signed up? 
Well, as you know, I got rolled a couple times. I got injured. Mm. Uh, you know, and everyone gets mysterious injuries yeah. before the project. <laughs> right before, we, though. It's like right they, before they the project. roll an ankle. <laughs> they all of a sudden have to have sur- surgery. Their, their grandmother fucking died. Like, How many grandmothers could you possibly have? You told me that 14 fucking times. How many grandmamas you got? Like, shit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. That getting injured and then also... Um, Understanding, well, what if I don't graduate? This is really hard. I don't do this type of training. This is not what I do and so forth. A lot of things went through my head, you know, a lot Mm -hmm. of things. And uh, failing, failing. And uh, because you're seen as this successful leader in the industry and in in the community. Ego. That was ego. Mm. That was ego. Huge one, huge one. There's no place in leadership in life for your ego, for your emotions. Yeah, that's that's fucking awesome. So then, all right, so you pull the trigger, you get signed up. Now, as you're starting to get prepared for it, what's that preparation look like? What is, what kind of, what, what, now you're going to a different level of thinking like, all right, now I'm actually on there. I've made the commitment. What's going through your head as, as the time is coming closer leading up to the actual date? Just, you know, what I was doing, I was doing a lot of bodybuilding exercises. Okay, a lot of bodybuilding next. I had to switch it, do more functional workout, mm-hmm. a little more cardio base. Not, I wasn't accustomed to it. So changing that, and you know, working on it. I actually worked on it for probably about four months, five months, and getting right so I can be prepared. So I prepare myself for the project and what's going to happen. Yeah, you that, know? the bodybuilding look ain't going to get you through the project. Deadlifting eight hundred pounds ain't going to get you through the project. Sticking the needle in your motherfucking ass ain't going to get you through the project. I'll tell you that. We no. want you need to have a good mix of you know strong enough to hang with a strong man, but fast enough to hang with a fast guy. Enough endurance to hang with an endurance guy. Enough of everything. Better than good enough. A little more than good enough in everything. Oh yeah, it's good if, enough. It's not good enough. If you're a bigger guy, it's a little bit harder. It is what it is. We'll get into that and in some of the, some of the things that you have some struggle with. I'm still having the nightmares <laughs> nightmares in my head watching you go through some of those evolutions. Your long fucking lanky ass. Yeah. So, speaking of that, what, what what is what was your least favorite experience? So now, all right, we talked about before you signed up that you got signed up. The preparation. Now we're here. You show up. We get started. What was your? What are some of the experience you have of some of your least favorite memories of the process? Um. Yeah. Hats off. The pit. The pit. Weren't you shaking your head at me when I was doing the pit? Because I've <laughs> known you before shaking? that. Yeah. I know you for a good, probably close to a year before yeah. you showed up to the project, maybe six months before. You came to the Squire with your Squire program with your son before. Um, you've done some coaching before. So I knew a good amount. I knew, I knew you pretty well showing up there. And I remember you. we started our first just in the pit, just a very short distance, a short amount of time. Just pretty, We call it just the intro to the pit. Just getting accus- yeah. acclimated to it. And me and Ray, I mean, no, the, the instructor that we're not mentioning, we, <laughs> we, uh, we both know you pretty well before that. We saw you hit the dirt and start doing something on the ground. Well, I don't know what the fuck it was, but you started doing something. We looked at each other. And we look back at you and just we're like, what the fuck is up with Mark? <laughs> like, I could, it, you looked like, I don't know if you ever, when you were a kid, had slugs where you were from, slugs on the yeah. ground, yeah. and you put salt on them, yeah. and they start fizzling up, yeah. and they start twitching and rolling yeah. up. That's what you look like. You look like a slug that someone poured salt on them out of the pit. That's what we were, we were looking at. So Couldn't agree more. <laughs> so what, what was it then that, like, the, what other experience you had that, that you felt were some of the, the difficult parts or least favorite or hardest portions for you? Um, on the top end of my head is obviously I just mentioned the pit. What else would I say? Um, oh, the bear crawls. I don't like bear crawls. Oh, so I bear, can't stand bear crawls. So then the bear crawling through the pit <laughs> definitely wasn't the fucking com- no, good no, combination. No, no, that was fun. Any kind of bear crawl, anything associated with the pit, I just did not want to be there. Point just so you know, out there, the pit is a, it's a pleasurable experience. It's, we, it's, it's relaxation. There's foot rubs and neck massages and, 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 and prostitutes and beers and little, little, little umbrellas in your little, little water bottles. It's a great experience for, for all. So that's just yeah. the pit. It's just in case you're wondering what he's talking about by the pit. I don't want to leave you. I don't want to exclude you out from, from at home. All right. So you're in the pit. You're doing the shit that sucks, the hard shit, the, sh- the things you don't like, the things that are difficult for you personally. What is it that keeps you from saying, you know what, I'm already successful in business. I'm considered successful in life. I've accomplished so much. I'm fucking gone. I'm out of here. Like, keep your damn project. I'm going to ring the bell. I'm going home. This is just, this is just, I'm out of here. What stopped you from doing that? What stopped me was uh, Big Surge. 
Big Surge. AKA. He's on, AKA Big Surge. In the house. He did the project before me and completed it. And, and I'm his mentor. That's what I was going to say. What, who is he to you? So you guys s- signed up for 007 together. Right. You got injured, missed right. it. He graduated 07. You came to 08. Imagine how that looks going back to your office. Serge graduated. He's your right-hand man. You know, you're, you're, you're his mentor, his, his leader, his boss when it comes down to it. And working together. And then imagine you had to go and tell him, couldn't hack it. I quit. Imagine that. Just imagine that. I can't I would have broke that. my leg. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have rang that bell. No that, matter fucking. That's what, a hell no of a reason what, why. Like no matter what. When we saw you for the first time in the pit, Ray and I looked like, how, for a split second, I I knew you that I I didn't think you were going to quit. But the way that you were on the that what we saw occurring on the ground, I can't even explain. And I'm having fucking flashbacks, and I start shaking thinking about it. We looked at each other like, how the fuck is he going to go back? Now, and tell Serge that he didn't make it because the, the way he looked on the ground, we, we couldn't see how. And that was like hour two. Yeah. We were like, how is he going to make it 73 more fucking hours yeah. if that's where we're at? But it was just not your event. <laughs> it's just what we no. can say. No. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> fucking awesome. Awesome. So uh, let, me, let me ask you, what, what were some of your takeaways then from the project? What did you discover about yourself Coming out of the, when you were there, even even in the mix, like you're there. What are you some things you're discovering about yourself in the project? Is my biggest issue in this whole thing is I had no control. My whole life, my business and everything, I'm in control. During the project, I gave up that control, and it was a struggle with me mentally, physically. You tell me to do something, I don't got to think, I got to do mm-hmm. it. But outside of that. My mind was, I didn't know, up from down to side. I had no control. And when I didn't have control, it also, I lacked in confidence. And that's a big deal for me. And I realized that not having control makes me feel uncomfortable, but embrace being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. That's so, the biggest thing. Awesome. So find and find some more areas where you're not in control because how much of life do you actually really fucking control? You don't control 90% of the shit that happens in your life. Absolutely. All you can control is your character, how you approach it, your attitude, how hard you're going to go at putting in max. That's all you can control is going all out and dealing with it. That's all you can control. That's it. So you realize that you weren't putting yourself in, in positions that you didn't have control. And that's probably what was holding you back right. in your business. Like if you're just in that fishbowl and controlling it, imagine if you get, have to go out to the sea, what's going to happen. So that was a pretty big breakthrough for you as a you know, successful entrepreneur. That, that enormous, enormous Enormous. It's 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 made me who I am today. I wouldn't awesome. change it for fucking nothing. That's awesome. That is some good stuff. So now we let's talk about what it then during the process. What's what were some of your favorite evolutions? Something that you just wow. had fun with? Like this is just fucking awesome. This is a privilege to be here. What would that be? Believe it or not, some people say the pit. Ah, no, not mine. The ocean. I live by the ocean. It was gravy. It was great. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And you were in February, so that would be the colder time yeah. of the year, right? I was good. But was it good. was almost therapeutic. It was therapeutic. I was like, yes, finally, away from the pit. Yes, something I like. And think of life <laughs> if you just had that attitude for everything. Imagine that. <sighs> Powerful. Something, it's cold and windy, or you're supposed to be suffering, but it's like, it's fucking nature. Like, what a privilege out here in Southern California, out in the ocean, Mother Nature, fucking, what more could you ask for? Like, how could you complain? And we'll get guys that'll quit on at the beach just from sitting in the fucking sand with a little water splashing on them. Yep. And they'll quit. Imagine if you just had that attitude with everything in life, everything in life that's supposed to suck, that everyone else thinks sucks, and you're like charging towards it while everyone's else running away from it. Imagine the success and just fucking domination and fulfillment you could have if that's the way you approach it. So that, that's awesome. Super. That's good stuff. So, all right, so you graduated, went home. What were some of the immediate immediate impact you had right away that you noticed like boom like right away this is like already life changing what were some of the things that occurred when yeah. you first went back home um steve i'm always used to doing everything myself i'm a single father i do everything myself and when i went home my son came and said oh you know didn't say congratulations he's like dad i knew you were gonna do it it's all good and then he went on with his business and then you know the girl I was dating at the time, she was there and she saw me, I'm all fucked up and look at me and she, was, she didn't say nothing. 
She's just like, all right, cool. Hey, I'm going to leave. And uh, that just made me think, like, man, I need to change shit now. So you said the girl you were dating. We're dating. And we'll put two and two together. Yeah, on put that two one. and two together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and just and just it just dawned on me now. I, you know, it just really I want to I want to have the whole piece of pie. I just don't want business. I want my personal life and you know, eventually meet that right person or or whatever the case might be. But I just realized there, I need to change things up. I gotta become a I need to become a better version of myself. So the project gave you that line in the sand, and this is for all men out there, right? A line in the sand that basically says, all right, either we're going to go forward with this relationship or it, bitch got to go, one or the other. Like, that's, you finally came to that conclusion, and that's what you, the way you decided. So I think for the project, we will, not only will we help you become better husbands, fathers, leaders, entrepreneurs, and men, but we will help you get divorces and break up with your girlfriends at the project. What more can you ask for? You've been wanting to do it. We're going to give you the excuse to do it. We're going to give you the balls to do it. And we're going to show you why you need to do it. Because sometimes, and, I, and I, as much as it sounds like I'm joking, I am halfway joking, but I'm halfway serious. Like, that, right? That's, that's some life-changing stuff, decisions you need to make that maybe were long overdue, that, you know, you're wait, spending time in your life in years that it's time to move forward, right? That's kind of where you're at. It's, it's time to move forward and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And maybe for me, it was like not having what I'm used to, mm -hmm. but embracing it. Yeah. Embracing it. Because right now, as we today, I'm a better version of myself now than I was yesterday. And I expect to be a better version tomorrow. Tomorrow. Fucking love it. And that was because of the project. Better than when you were yesterday, not good enough for tomorrow. No, I'm not good enough for tomorrow. Never good enough. Never good enough. Awesome. So, all right, you graduated. That's some of the impact. How, how do you see the long-term impact of the graduation of the project, just everything that you've learned, discovered? What kind of long-term impact now that it's months later, not that immediate impact, and also in the future? What do you, how do you see it affecting you? Uh, it's already affecting me. The way I am with my family, the way I am, I'm, a, I'm even a better father than I was. I'm, a better, I'm better to my family. I'm, I'm a better friend. And I'm a fucking badass leader. And I contribute oh, yeah. that all to the project. All of it. That's to make me the man I am right now. That's some Much crazy love. stuff. So as successful and high status as you already were, to think to say that those statements, that's some some powerful shit. Fuck yeah. That's some powerful Fuck shit. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you this, I wanna mention this, is if this was a if every man when they turned 18, and this was a prerequisite, when you're a man, that you do this, this fucking world would be a fabulous place. I'll tell you that right now. A lot less bitching and moaning and excuse making and passive aggressiveness and little Entitlement bitches. Entitlement bullshit. Yep, yep. Gone. Gone. Awesome. Awesome. So the brotherhood, the Project Brotherhood, what does it mean to you? What kind of impacts that had in your life? Just having the, the brotherhood of the project. Have you ever had anything like that before no. in your life? You know, being surrounded by hungry, successful, motivated, just kick-ass men of fire from all, all over the country, all over the world, and all different industries that you could just relate to now. They're like-minded. What's it mean to, to you to be a part of that, that brotherhood and that camaraderie? It's awesome. It's, it's awesome. It's just we confide in one another, hold each other accountable. Steve, I coach with you. Just everything. I'm just immersed in this 120%. And I'm also going to immerse my son in this also. And I believe in it. I love it. And um, this is not a temporary thing for me. This is a lifelong thing mm -hmm. for me. It'll never end. It'll only grow. That's fucking awesome. How have you taken advantage of the project so far? Have you, how, how often are you interacting with other graduates, instructors? And how, how, how is it, what have you actually implemented when it comes to the brotherhood? How, how are you actually taking advantage of it? Okay, obviously, as I mentioned with the coaching, uh, with other brothers, actually one of the brothers that I graduated with is also assisting just like myself. Uh, it's, just, it's just phenomenal. I wanna continue, I'm doing something with my son next month, Squire program. I'm just totally immersed in this and I just wanna, um, I wanna keep on growing and growing with the brotherhood, I've never had this before. I've never had a brotherhood. I've never had this type of like accountability and this, it's phenomenal. 
and since the project, you've you've been over my house. We we worked out together, getting hanging out. Um, you know, you're my some, friend. Having some. Pro- you're my friend. He's called me the f word. Did you're he just call me the f word? He's my friend, by the He's actually my, my friend. My he first my friend. official f word that I've he's, got. He's my friend. Just pop my f word he's cherry. My <laughs> awesome, awesome. But and I've also seen pictures of you at, at the beach with other graduates, for, right? And absolutely. You've also I've seen you interacting with graduates from other classes you didn't even know. Like it's yep. it's fucking crazy. And it you'd think you know we knew each other for years and. Yep. Getting together and just families getting together, meeting each other, kids play, getting together. It, it's a fucking awesome thing. It's a beautiful thing. Awesome thing. So let me ask you now, you're here to help out with this class coming up as a, as a junior instructor. You just graduated a couple months ago and, and you're already back, giving up a week of your time. You know, you're a busy guy running a, a business and you're taking a week away from that because once we're here, you're, you're pretty much off the grid. It's like yep. you can't work. It's, it's we're, we're, we're making shit happen over here. So we appreciate you coming to help out with, that, with the class for that. What are some key pieces of advice that you would give to these gentlemen that are about to go through this class tomorrow, but probably the same advice is going to be good for any men out there just struggling in life. What are some things you would tell them to get through the the project, but also just to get through life? Is if you're missing something in your life, if you feel like you're not leveling up, Even if you feel like you're leveling up, and I'll be honest with you, Steve, maybe there was at times in my life before this, I thought I was leveling up, but I fucking wasn't. That was a joke. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was just lying to myself. I think in my personal opinion, I don't care where you are in life. You need the project. You need the project because it's the way I feel, I feel fulfilled right now as we speak. And this is a fucking drug. And I don't ever want it to go. And I hope it just comes off the energy that I'm giving. It's just, I fucking feel, and I tell you this over the, when we have our coaching, I am fucking fulfilled. And I have 100% gratitude. Fucking love it. So you haven't haven't felt that before? That type of fulfillment? Steve, Steve, we coach. No. That version of me when we first started coaching to now? That's fucking awesome. Different fucking man. I'm fulfilled. I'm fulfilled and it's a fucking amazing feeling. So fucking love my life. I love that's everything crazy. about it. That's some crazy stuff. That's good stuff. That's fucking awesome. That's a drug. And I don't want that drug to ever leave me. And it's something you have to work on daily. What, what are some other advice you give to these, these gentlemen going through to make it through and then to continue on with that, with that process? What are some other things you tell them? Oh, then to do drugs. Do drugs the first time because it's a drug. <laughs> it's fucking high as a motherfucker. I'm fucking high. That's true. It it's is, crazy. You don't even need to do drugs, and pe- people will think oh, you're on drugs. They'll be like, what is this dude on? People will look at you like, what is this dude on? He's on fucking the project. That's what he did. He did 10 cc's of the motherfucking project. 10 what cc's. What I would say, obviously, do the, uh, the, tw- the training that's required with Steve and so forth and go beyond that, but also the mindset. Get in the mindset that you're going to finish this no matter what. And be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And accept the process. It's a process and accept it. And you can do it. Because I'm living proof. I'm fulfilled and it's fucking amazing. You want this. And I think in addition to that, put yourself in situations that you have zero control of so you can learn how to just control yourself in those situations that you have no control of. That was your big, big breakthrough. So absolutely fucking awesome. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. I want to thank you for joining us today on the MDK Project show. So if you got any info, anything out of this golden nuggets, I'm sure you did. I always want go back and watch these episodes myself and take notes so I can make myself even better. It's all learning process. So if you got any value out of this video, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, like and comment below, share this with other men that you know need to have that same type of fulfillment and high on life energy that Mark has. We could jump on the phone, talk about the project, have an interview call to see if it's a good fit for you to join the MDK Brotherhood. So just like, comment, subscribe. I will talk to you later. Mark, thanks again for coming. Of course. Appreciate you coming by and spending the week with us. In case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.